Hi, I'm Sergey Gordeev, an Emmy award-winning journalist and TV show host. Working in broadcast television over the years, I often meet really fascinating people and after a program or an episode ends, after I finish working on them, I often have this feeling of, I really would love to have a longer conversation with this person or that expert. Uh, and um, so I've started doing interviews of my own with people whom I found especially interesting or who I felt had a particularly unique perspective to add to our understanding of the human experience. One of such people is Natalia Rusetskaya, and we're in for a really interesting conversation. Um, spoiler alert, it has to do with Valentine's Day. And uh, before we go on, I'd like to let you know that this will be an adult conversation between adults for adults. It will contain some adult topics and adult language. So if you're not yet 18 years of age, we suggest you find something more age appropriate for you to watch and invite you to join us after you turn 18 if you're interested in the topic of human intimacy and relationships between uh, adults of sexual nature. So um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Natalia Rusetskaya, a couples therapist, sexologist, and our today's sexpert. Hi, Natalia. Hi. So uh, kind of you to join us and um, well, let's dive right into it. It is Valentine's Day today. We have our adult beverages. We have our adult conversation about sure. very adult things. But you know, um, what struck me, um, uh, I was reading yesterday's uh, New York Times and there was an article there about sex and about uh, sexual connection um, that Americans are experiencing. And I was shocked to read that uh, apparently 30% of males, young males under 30 years old, are reporting not having had sex even once in the past year, Yeah. right? So 25% of all you know, men and women uh, report not having had sex even once in the past year. So the article was all about these, these plummeting numbers. Americans are having you know, three times less sex than they were having you know, um, in 2008. You know, just yeah. like over the years, it's like these, these numbers are going down. So Americans are having less and less sexual uh, interaction and they report it being less and less satisfying to them. What do you think is going on? <laughs> What's happening? You're the sex expert. Well, I think a few factors. And you know, I'm thinking actually about this younger generation you were telling me about. Um, this generation, from what I understand, they've been raised and the primary sexual education was porn. Right. And when those young men turn to their like 20s, early 30s, many of them have no idea what to do with the real physical partner, whether it's right. male or female. They there's so much anxiety and lack of knowledge and lack of experience and it's easier just to like sit at home maybe like masturbate from time to time and and not, and not to, have to deal with an actual human yeah it's too much anxiety provoking yeah so wow. this is i think this is one factor here if we're talking about somewhat younger I mean, i'm sorry somewhat older people quite frequently those days it's like level of fatigue um being overworked uh sitting on covid together too much proximity with each other like you know how my mentor says like fire needs air there is no air passing right. by between you and your like your loved one if you're like in the small apartment of new york city or right. anywhere else and how do you expect any desire to be like burning and existing throughout right. all of this you know exactly because you know i feel like People are tired of each other. <laughs> well, it, well, it's also people are tired in general. It's counterintuitive, right? Because yeah. sex, sexual, what we're really talking about is connection. Because sexual interaction, yeah. you know, intimacy, it's it's a way of relating to yeah. each other between humans, right? Yes. And so our that requires, at the very least, attention to be directed at your partner, right? Yes. So so our attention is so you know kind of dispersed, dispersed and there's so many things claiming our attention at mm -hmm. such an alarming rate yeah. you know we barely have enough time to pay attention to our needs let, let alone you know listen to another human being or pay attention to another yeah. human being total so this is one factor another one as i mentioned briefly was fatigue and especially let's say for those people who do have children as well in the picture and very high demanding jobs there is no opportunity to get any time alone to regenerate to uh, start thinking, fantasizing about anything erotic, you know. To right. Well, with. you bring up a good point because uh, it, at the very least, requires 
you know, imagination, right? Because we, um, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we were just walking over to this, to this studio of ours and uh, we passed Romantic Depot, a, a, a store full of, you know, sex toys and, and, and things that stimulate imagination. Yeah. So I think, you know, um, uh, we will obviously dive into all things sexual, um, you know, uh, uh, and, and intimacy related. And this is a three part series, Ask the Sexpert. Our sexpert is here for all three of these parts. I, I thought in, th in this first part, we could try to actually just dive in and try to understand what is sex? What makes good sex? What makes sex that feels satisfying to people? You know, what are some of the ingredients of, of good sex? Yeah. So, so you mentioned imagination. Are there other um, ingredients of good, satisfying sexual encounters? Sure. So I would even start speaking more, not just about good sexual encounters, but maybe about optimal sex, mm -hmm. because I'm part of this study produced by Canadian researchers currently, and they really like the stuff because they really look at couples who've been together at least for 25 years in the committed relationship, but also who don't report just having good sex. They, they are saying that their sex is memorable and like really, fantastic, uh, really different from, you know, whatever they experienced when they were much younger. And, you know, it's really nice to learn from those lovers. Well, that's well, right, because uh, you, you said that they were, you know, they, they spent at least a quarter of a century together as yes. a couple. So yes. so they've, they've, you know, had time they to really, really learn, yes. learn, learn from each other and from themselves, from their own experience. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned there were um, eight kind of ingredients, yes. eight, eight, eight pillars of optimal Sex, uh, yeah. sex. And note, note that it's not good sex, but optimal, optimal sex. Sex, sex yeah. that, that feels good, that is satisfying, that's memorable. Mm -hmm. So could, could you talk sure. about some of them? Sure, definitely. And I think a lot of people might think like it's all about how many orgasms you had, if you right. have great chemistry or not. And actually, uh, the number of orgasms and just orgasm itself made it to the least, but not of those eight ingredients, but some somewhat important factors, mm. but not those primary eight, eight ingredients. This is this is blowing my mind because you know, uh, <laughs> <and of> course, <laughs> I'm, as a, as, well as a man, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm you know I'm thinking about how you know orgasm is important, you know, um, mm -hmm. but and we will talk you know in this three part series we'll um, we'll talk about differences between men and women, how yeah. they approach and process. Um, of course, everybody's different, um, but in general, what are some of the factors yeah. uh, in, in male and female approach to sex and processing and understanding it? Yeah, uh, and what it means to be like right. satisfied, right? But, but I'm just so surprised that um, having an orgasm or just even, you know, the, how many you had or whether you had it at all, that, that it didn't even make it as one of the eight yeah. ingredients of optimal sex, sexual experience. Yes. So what are the... So I'll, uh, I'll try to tell right. you what I remember. You know, I always forget this little list yeah. of eight. So definitely like very exquisite sexual communication. Communication. Yes. But even more like more sexual communication mm -hmm. where you could be very clear and particular about your preferences, likes, dislikes, ability to communicate that. Mm -hmm. uh, ability to be very authentic with your partner. Being in the present moment, it's a huge one. It's so hard to achieve, especially for women, actually, this one. But I work with, you know, with both genders who complain on it constantly, like not being able to be in the present moment and you have to teach them how to do it. Meaning women complain about them not being able to yes. be here now during yes. sex or their partner not no, paying attention that women, themselves. Women, like ourselves, <laughs> me as a woman too, you know, I and I could relate, you know, Just because... Just being worried about the stuff but not really being multi, here now. Yes, multiple things, you know, cooking lunch for, you know, child next day, uh, washing dishes, doing laundry, like, you know, a woman could be laying with you in bed and she thinks about a million of other things. Mm -hmm. and, it's really, you're not really here. Yes, yes, because of the like multitasking and really needing like to run this whole household usually, you know. Yeah. Um, so being in the present moment, then ability to take risks, mm. being adventurous, trying something new, take risks in this relationship configuration. This is one of the big ones. Um, being aligned with each other. This what does is, that mean, being aligned You with know, I, I give an example actually to my couples because a lot of couples, they have no clue what I, what I even mean. And I had like one very distinct example of that, that I experienced in my life and that I sometimes describe, and it was connected to dance. And dancing with somebody who you might not even know. It could be anything in tango, right? Or any right. other type of dance right. where you could 
follow the partner even sometimes with your closed eyes right on the dance floor and you just really have to feel the partner where he or she might be leading you right mm -hmm. whoever's the leader and that's i think is one of the highest manifestations of alignment you know to me it sounds like really listening to your partner really paying attention to your partner that's what aligning well and feel feeling and the partner feeling as well, the partner right? anticipating some move here or there and being able to follow each of those being moves. focused we talked about attention being focused yes. on your partner okay. is turns out is, it's a huge in, hugely important yeah. ingredient in optimal or good satisfying yes. sexual experience yes okay what else yes uh, transcendence was one of them what's transcendence oh gosh it's, it's such a complex uh, component for me that I you know I, I have like I might have like a difficulty explaining it right. at the moment. What else? What else was there? Mm, I think I already mentioned that being able to be like, ah, and high level of um, empathy. Empathy. Yes. To, to your partner being super empathetic so that another person could really open up. You know, um, path is like, you know, it has to do with, with, with pathos feeling, right? So like it's, sympathetic like feeling with right mm -hmm. empathetic like yeah. um a kind of feeling on their behalf or really yeah. getting what they might be feeling so it, it really it, it, it you know whichever angle we look at it you know um it seems like paying attention really yes. focusing yes. on the object of yes. your desire mm -hmm. is what makes the encounter satisfying for both partners yes. because if they're paying attention to each other then they're aligned yes. then they're here and now because they're in you know each other and, and they yeah. they kind of um are able to react to what's happening in the moment yeah. so presence listening you know communicating Vulner vulnerability. You said, vulnerability, vulnerability because vulnerability. risk taking has to be yeah has because to be vulnerability. if you can't be vulnerable enough you might never be able to really explain and let your partner sexual partner know what do you really want to experience how you really want things to happen in this sexual play and so on and so forth. So. You mentioned communication, and that's that I think is such a complex topic in general. You know, I'm a. Oh, actually, um, one of my favorite topics. Right. Well, because you know, as yeah. a, I guess I consider myself um, a, a communication professional, <laughs> and uh, well, no, you're the sexual communication professional, but you know, communication is 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 hard enough when it just involves you know even daily simple things daily right daily communication now right? sexual activity is such a vulnerable thing you know it's such a fragile you know it involves like you know very delicate a, a very delicate area of human existence and so oh, communicating gosh. you know about that 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 you know communicating is hard enough you know to do it thoughtfully and tactfully yeah. and well um doing it about sex you know sometimes seems just really <laughs> daunting you know yeah. how do you have another layer of complexity often yeah like so um you know i guess uh, you know so many things but but you know uh, but one of the things um that before we even get to communicating about sex i wanted to ask you about just how do we ourselves understand what it is that that we like that we want mm. that we would prefer and, and what feels good for us yeah well I actually give multiple exercises to take home to my clients who I think would benefit tremendously from knowing their body exploring their body um, a lot of women in particular feel entitled to receive all of this exploration from the men or that men should know what to do with her body but the way I approach it I explain to multiple females how important it is to really for you to know it first to experiment with your body to experiment with different levels of touch and the different circumstances and they give them specific instructions how to do it like either after taking a bath or while you're taking the shower and how to use the towel slowly touching your skin and giving attention to all of your sensations um, and then like even like exploring like different ways to experience orgasm a lot of for now you're talking specifically about women well in that particular case mm -hmm. yeah if you don't mind so because the different ways for a female to uh, reach orgasm from different types of stimulation and so for her to it would be great to really learn 
and touch herself in certain ways and see what works, what doesn't work, so then she could touch either her female or male partner, you know? So yeah, that was Right. It, it just sounds like the first step, and I should um, say that and Natalia uh, works with all sorts of clients, with couples and singles. Uh, her specialty uh, is heterosexual relationships between, between men and women. And so um, in this case, for this specific exercise that you suggested for women, it sounds like the very first thing that you suggest for women to do is to, to touch themselves, to kind of have a conversation, a sexual, a sensual, yeah. sensuous conversation yes. with themselves yes. to, to hear their body react yes. and to learn what yeah. what it is that they like mm -hmm. right yeah yeah and all, all what i do a lot of it is actually focuses specifically on sensual exploration not even sexual but we're starting from sensual exploration what is the difference between sensual and sexual exploration uh, i in my work working with different sexual challenges barriers anxieties i prescribe different sex exercises and uh, they are like exercises actually to explore your sensuality to begin with where i teach people first how to relax how to take focus away from performance and that's actually a lot of like young generation is super focused on performance like having a reaction having orgasm for sure like all of that stuff so we try to put it all away like if not immediately then gradually and to I teach people how to really start giving attention either to their own bodies to begin with, to each other's bodies, how to involve senses, all five senses, how to pay attention, what works for you more in terms of you being stimulated, if you respond, respond better to the sound or to the touch or to certain words or certain sounds of the uh, waves. Uh, like ocean waves or anything else, you know, for your own relaxation, for you to feel in more of that sensual being, you know, what what it all evokes in you. That, that just kind of really, um, you know, I, I had this, this realization that sensual means involving the senses. Yeah. So we have the touch, yeah. we have the smell, which is very important. We have the sight, right? They say that, you know, there's a uh, saying that a man loves with, with his eyes and a woman loves with her ears, right? Yes. So for a woman, you know, he, it's, it's important to hear what a person, the like carrying conversation, compliments, yes. the mm -hmm. communication format. It's visually, you know, it's very important how yeah. the partner looks and mm -hmm. how, you know, she appears. But we that. still test it out and we right. see, let's say, if for that specific individual man, variation. if you're really more visual type or you're more like uh, about smell or something else, you know? Tactile. So. Some mm -hmm. people are all about touch, right? And so yeah. for them, you know, if they're not touched in a certain way, it's hard for them to, to be excited, to be yes. aroused, to be present, Or, or just to, to be happy at all, you know, right. generally. Right. I deal with a lot of men who just feel miserable if they're not right. being touched enough on a daily basis. Right. Some men would even like beg for a hug or a kiss in the morning right. and they cannot function well and leave the house and make money and provide for the family if they don't get that tactile right. stimulation at least on, on that level. And I know some people who actually are not at all into touch, you know, which is interesting yeah. because, you know, the sex is all about touching. Well, it's, so many things. Right? it's so many things. Good but, sex, you know, great sex, a little, a little You know, touch. optimal <laughs> sex. You know, it's just, but it's, it, I guess one thing to really, truly, you know, start to understand if people really want to um, approach this is that it seems like everybody's unique. Yes. There is no such thing as a norm. Yes. There is just nobody you. is broken. You know what I mean? Yes. Everybody's just different. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's so the first step yeah. is just to listen to yourself and listen to your yeah. instrument, to your body, mm -hmm. you know, listen to your senses. So mm -hmm. here is the hence the sensual yes. exercises, mm -hmm. right? Uh, where you kind of explore the senses yeah. and see which ones you respond to yeah. and how. And you know, like I've heard like a very nice phrase from one of the famous sex therapists recently where she says, you know, there are no like perversions. We look at it as preferences, they're just different preferences. Right, well perversion implies that there is the right way to do things yes. and then there's a twisted way to do things yes. and that's what you pervert. Acceptable, yeah. Right, right, so acceptable, acceptable. You know, I um, remember as a child, uh, my mom, you know, when it would be uh, time to talk about, you know, sex, instead of having like s a sex conversation, you know, my, my dad was a pilot, he flew all the time, my mom was just super busy, she was at work all the time, but at one point, 
during sort of my um, maturation as a human being, I found conveniently uh, a medical encyclopedia, you know, and of course I went to, you know, at that point I was yeah. very interested about, you know, just learning about awakening as a, mm -hmm. you know, sexual being, and, um, can I ask you what age was that? I, I think it may curious. have been, I don't know, I feel like it may have been a, right around like 10, 11, 12, somewhere like that, and, and I was just like, sex it was a thing, it, 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 it uh, was fascinating to me, I, I, would, I would just, I would wonder about it, and then so, of course I went to sex, and I was just reading all about sex and there was, you know, male and female sexual parts and and then I just chanced upon the definition of normal. Mm. And this is in an old, you know, uh, medical encyclopedia, middle of the uh, 20th century. The definition of normal was whatever is acceptable to both partners. And it said it over there in yeah. the encyclopedia. Wow, and it made, made nice. such an impression on me because I had this in my mind so that wow. there was a right way and there was a wrong yeah. way to, 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 yeah. to do sex or to be sexual, right? And it was just, it, it struck me back then that there is no right and wrong way. There is just what is, what feels good, what yeah. is acceptable to those involved yeah. in this activity. Yeah. So, that's so, beautiful. I like it. You know, it really, that. I still remember it. I still yeah. talk about it. You know, and it, I still think about the fact that uh, th this wonderful and very wise yeah. description of, of the norm, that there is no norm. There's just you. And, and so the key to a satisfying mm -hmm. sexual experience mm -hmm. uh, is to listen, first of all, Mm -hmm. To yourself. Now you have this, uh, you know, these exercises for women. Do you have exercises for men? Uh, if there are men uh, out there uh, uh, watching this, De definitely, to explore De what, definitely how? so, definitely so. so. And uh, again, like it's a longer story, you right. know. Like I usually would just look at each case in particular. What is the request? What is the complaint? And uh, that will be uh, particularly tailored. Right. to each client but yes definitely well, but for, men, for men for, for men like what can men do to kind of learn about their body to listen to what they respond to do you have any exercises you could suggest oh, sex exercises even like very quickly yeah. right now in the context of this conversation um it will be still like you, you know it, I think it, I would need like about 15 minutes like to describe right. each of the exercises so I think I would I would prefer to do it with somebody like directly right. one another. So on. maybe in, I, in part two or three, yeah. we'll invite somebody, uh, and we you, we can just have a conversation between you and them. But um, in general, the first step that you recommend mm -hmm. is to to explore your own body to yeah. understand what it is that you respond to. Actually, you know what I I can I just realized like a very quick one that sometimes I ask people to do in front of me. Most of them they need to take home, do it at home with each other, and bring me the feedback mm -hmm. collecting the data. So this one is very kind of easy to do in the office space. And yes, I, I could share this one, it's a quick one. Um, so pretty much I ask people to sit very close to one another mm -hmm. and for the whole like hand, hand and arm to be available. Mm -hmm. And at first, let's say I would ask one person to touch the hand and arm of the partner. So hand for, and arm yeah, as in like, like Yeah, so I, I will give you an example mm -hmm. here. So pretty much I ask, uh, so I'm sitting next to them mm -hmm. and I'm asking them to do it in front of me. So let's say I'm asking like a female partner, let's pretend to give um, a touch to her male partner and to first to touch him the way you, she thinks he wants to be touched. Mm. And you kind of, when you start exploring the hand a little bit or if she thinks that her male partner or her female partner likes like very firm touch, mm -hmm. you know, she would go like this or if she likes like mm -hmm. the partner might might like movements like that so she figures it out right and then I tell, tell them to stop we pause and then I tell her now you touch your partner for your own pleasure and then people usually get a little bit like lost confused because they're not like uh, used to think this way and then she might like really be more in touch with her own sensations and she maybe like start doing something very different and slow mm -hmm. whatever and then ask them in a couple of minutes so to stop and then mm -hmm. they switch the roles and then they compare i was like so do you see any difference what was was there anything different for you when you were given a touch for his pleasure or your partner's pleasure and when you were given touch for your own pleasure and that's how people start understanding that my different things might work differently for me personally and for me when I want to give you pleasure. Mm -hmm. So it really makes them think and slow down and explore it more at home already without me being on the picture, you know? Well, it also gives an opportunity 
for them to talk to each other. So this is oh, a yeah. reasonably safe, yes. you know, not performance based, mm -hmm. you know, conversation yeah. where, you know, if uh, a female partner t touches a male and in the way she thinks he will like and he goes, actually, I would like it firmer, I'd like mm -hmm. it softer, I'd like it in this way or that mm -hmm. way, that way uh, in a controlled environment, in a safe environment, and by safe, uh, meaning it's not kind of a, a, um, an accusation or an attack. Yeah. Yeah. It's more of a sharing, yes. you know, actually this felt great, or this, I would love that, mm -hmm. and then a, a partner hears that. Or you pinch me, that. or scratch me with your nails, or whatever it right. is. Right. And, that, and that's, yes, and what you're describing, it's also one of my ways to open that conversation about sensuality here as well, when they have to speak up first, right, and start give, paying attention to little details, right, and then when they go home, it's a little bit easier for them then to continue that endeavor together right right you know it just occurs to me that that it's not part of our culture to talk about sex you know not to each all. other as if, like we, we don't want to you know feel like we are giving instructions you know mm -hmm. sex is something you know people just expect people to get it but but how can you if you don't share you know so that, that, Very that that's hard, a, almost impossible how many guys are feeling so thankful when they're partners either again male or female partners start like letting them know what feels good they're like oh my gosh i feel like i feel like i have a map in my hands otherwise like if the sexual partner lays there like quietly and no response and no guidance no, no hinting feedback, and yeah. no feedback they're like i have they're no clue they're guessing at it and they have yeah, no they way of they, knowing whether they they they're succeeding or no not no clue if it's working because what works for like and again like i could speak a little bit here about women like what works for one woman will not work for another woman because they'll build differently you know and a lot of guys could be like at a loss like they don't know how what works for this one or that one you know so how do you you know i guess mm, start that process how do you introduce that process as part of relationship how do you talk about sex without killing the magic well you know i just I devoted some time to this because I was doing my research about how sexual communication can actually improve sexual satisfaction. And uh, what I see happening with my clients and improvements they were having, I was just straightforward. Now when people come in and they say like, oh, we do have difficulty like talking about sex and they have so many lawyers, sometimes journalists who are so good with language, right? good with communication on daily basis but when it gets to the bedroom stuff they're like oh we don't know how to really say it we just stay quiet they're like religious limitations cultural uh, influence all, all of that stuff that puts like a lot of pressure and makes this a taboo topic you know so how do I do it I mean it's I, I just give them some examples first of all I try to speak about it you know in a very light you know way smiling being very direct about some of the items and just show them myself, you know, model it kind of for them, that it's fine, you know, nobody's gonna die or faint if, like, if you say something about eroticism or sexuality, but it could really give you tools and better understanding of your loved one. Right, one way of thinking about it is that you can't make things worse, you can only make yes. things better by, exactly. you know, and I think like in all communication, especially in communication about something so delicate and so, um, you know, um, nuanced, yes, right? Very so, nuanced. so very individual, right? So, so very fragile. You know, uh, I think one way in which, um, well, like in all communication, first of all, kindness is important, oh, right? Yes. Uh, sensitivity, as in, yes. as in, like you don't, you know, say, okay, do this, this, and this. That was bad. That was wrong. You don't, you don't no, 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 do no, that, no. right? No. So softness and consideration, yes. right? Like speak to the others, like you would hope they would speak to you. Yes. Like that's a, um, I would imagine, you know, that would yes. be one way to to make that process yeah. a little bit less, um, you know, difficult for people. Totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another way is to maybe like introducing play into that conversation. Like, what's what's what are some of the ways to you know, so kindness, specificity, yeah. you know, I, I really, you know, maybe fo fo focusing on the positive versus negative, right? Like, I really like yeah. when you do I, that. I, yes, that, yes. You know? Well, you are actually, what you're saying, that's the tips I'm given. Yes, and kind of, and also teaching people not to complain about what some, like if something went wrong or not good enough, instead, like, focusing on what you would like to happen. And actually, you know, like, I liked, uh, you know, this and this would happen tonight, but I would like a little bit more of that maybe next time or guiding your partner with, you know, 
mold those new emphasis. So in, in the spirit of playing and exploration yes. together. With, yes, with not the being punitive. Yes. Share goal of let's have fun, right? Yeah, like, because it's supposed fun. to be fun. Totally. It's supposed to be enjoyable. And you know what? I actually, one very good example comes to mind. I got one, it's not a couple, one new client and he's like mid thirties. Uh, with a lot of uh, religious kind of baggage where he was like, oh my gosh, you know, I really want to learn how to speak more openly to my wife about sex and how to be a better lover and better partner for her, I don't know how to do it. So, and often a lot of these corrections, I am effective, uh, completely like making this happen in the couple's configuration. And here I just have here. I was like, okay, so I'll give him some examples, you know, what to do, what to say, uh, like how to be more playful, more open. And then he says, we don't really have sex because she goes through some of her own difficulties and her own therapy and some of the trauma. And so we just don't have it. And we also, we, biologically, we don't coincide with our timing because she, like some, something like when we get turned on, it just doesn't work. So he goes home and all what he learned in session with me, all of my guidance, he uses directly with the wife. Thankfully, she's very open mm -hmm. to hear and to explore. And she tells him that actually she gets around only um, in the afternoon or late afternoon hours, like mm -hmm. spontaneously. Right. And his prime time is more like evening time. Right. And what he does, then he adjusts his work schedule and he calls her next day and he says, and she works from home. And he tells her, you know, I'm coming home a little bit earlier today for my lunch break, and I'm gonna have you for lunch. Cool. And she is open, and they have sex, even though they did have sex for like over the last couple of months. And then she tells him at the end, so I'm your afternoon delight. Right. And they loved it, you know, because they, they got it, you know, together they were like, how she was like playful enough, open enough, and playing with the words, right? How he was flirting this way, like, you know, I'm gonna have you for lunch. And she says, and then the afternoon delight. Mm -hmm. And just two lines here, right? And it's, you see how a little bit of that sexual communication just worked, you know, and so what, that that's spot. the thing, you know, and, and they thankfully were open yeah. to, you know, hearing each other mm -hmm. and to, mm -hmm. to, to willing to accommodate yes. each other. You know, I'm just thinking, um, are there situations where, okay, look, you know, she's usually aroused and wants it in the afternoon. He mm -hmm. is not able, you know, and he's at work. to, to, to he get not to there. this he's until not evening, right? Yeah. Or maybe like somebody is, you know, horny in the morning and the other person is not. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend for that? Like Still, how, how do you make the un, you know, the, the pieces that don't fit together, how do you start approaching that? I think still communication will be hugely, hugely important here because you still figure out how to find maybe some middle ground, or let's say I have couples where one partner wants to go to sleep early, another partner needs to, wants to go to sleep like three hours later. Well, you make an adjustment, you come to bed at least a couple hours earlier, and even if you don't fall asleep right away, you still hang around, you still have that connecting time, maybe some uh, physical closeness, uh, maybe some affection, maybe just like, physical connection of being naked for 20 minutes or something touching each other. Maybe you're wrestling on the floor naked or whatever you're doing. And then um, something could happen, more could happen from it. But it's still still like figuring out the potential kind of ideas and plans of that. It, it sounds like it necessarily involves a desire to accommodate the partner. And and by doing so, you actually give yourself- each a, other kind of, you know, right? You give yourself also the gift of, you know, if, if you, if you so first you listen to yourself to understand like, oh gosh, you know, this is what I'm feeling it, you know, this is what I like, yeah. and then communicate it to the partner, and the, and the partner hopefully doing that with you, and then um, you try to, 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 to do the things that make, yeah. you know, that, that help your partner feel aroused, and that arouses you in turn, because they, when they are hot for you, that yes. kind of turns you on, and that is a, totally. a reciprocal, reciprocal event. Um, feedback yeah. loop, yeah. whatever, yes, whatever the yes, audio yes, term yes, is, yes, right? Yes, um, you know, so um, what would you uh, suggest, you know, for people who may, uh, because, you know, one of the things that, as I was just reading about this and uh, just drawing my own experience, you know, it is, you know, often just anecdotally observed that, that after people spend, you know, a lot of time together, um, they're kind yeah. of, um, 
not tired of each other. Bored, but there's, but they're well, bored. they're bored, right? They're, there's, there's, people are bored. There is this um, kind of sense like, well, gosh, you know, there's really nothing you can do to surprise me in bed, right? And so pe when people try to do, you know, now we're going to go to the store and buy this toy. Well, I don't really know what to do with this toy. Like, how do you, how, how, what do you do to, um, what are some of the things you suggest for people to spark, you know, to, to, to make it exciting after a long time of being together? Yeah. Well, um, often, you know, like when people come to me and say like, oh, we want our relationship to be passionate again after 15 years of being together, 20 years of being together. One of my first questions is, has it been passionate to begin with, right? right? Because if it never was, and now 20 years later, they want me just to create that passion out of the blue. I say like, I, I don't think I could be like very <laughs> right. helpful in this endeavor. Or but maybe they never thought about it, but now they, they're, they're ready for it. Now they realize that, gosh, you know, that's the thing we're not you know there is sex sex education in schools but it's yes. not like how to arouse desire in your partner yes. it's like here's the male parts here's the female parts here's how you know you know sex happens you know mm -hmm. now you're on your own yeah. you know some people just don't have that yeah. uh and, and they may get well, married and, yeah. and not know you know what what was um stunning to me uh i was just again preparing for this and talking to just all my female friends and they said to me that a shocking number of females, like more than you realize, and I don't know what the numbers are, um, for years have sex with their husbands without experiencing orgasm. Mm -hmm. And they just don't even know that they that there's this whole other world yes, that they available could. to them. In your experience, does that sound? Uh, yes, yes, I hear about right? it quite frequently, yes, unfortunately. Yeah. And again, once you give those women tools of sexual communication, one of my biggest hopes that they will have those big O's, big orgasms, yeah. you know, that they will open up new gates for that. And actually, you know, it's another thing, you know, comes again, recent sessions where I take, um, I call it biopsychosexual history assessment, and they see people separately, like each partner separately for this one. And sometimes if it's a heterosexual couple and they're asking, you know, do you know if your wife or your partner have an experiencing orgasms he often says yes and they ask like is that from clitoral stimulation or through penetration whatever. and the guy usually tells me what he thinks then i speak to a woman and it's a completely the same with his partner right separate right. one on one it's a different story and it's cool when they find out finally that actually she does not need oral sex but she wants to be penetrated and then a specific angle for to her to feel that orgasm you know right so because my female clarity. friends tell me that it's much rarer for more rare for a woman to achieve orgasm through vaginal penetration yes. and That's more easier. times uh, so than not it's, it's, it's possible for for, for for a woman to experience orgasm from clitoral stimulation yes totally totally so, correct yes right. like about 25 percent of women roughly who could do it through um, regular intercourse, female, female vaginal intercourse, and the majority of women would be able to feel it through either manual clitoral stimulation or oral sex, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. And, and so to, to guide your partner through that, again, you need your communication. Oh yeah, you need to that. like use your hand and his hand on the top and you know, guide. to see how you could be uh, stimulated and aroused this way or right. him getting some literature and then experimenting with oral sex a little bit differently and more and explaining, you know, like I need you to go a little bit more like with circular movements so or up and down with your tongue or put a little bit more pressure in certain directions. So, and then another person understands well, what is being needed. So it's really like an education. And totally. again, we, we're back to communication because we, um, I think we, we That's just why it's such a cool go all over it. Is, you know? like it all so comes areas. to communication. Whether yeah. you're going to start, it still comes oh, frequently to the communication. Because I think what we're trying to get to, like, how do you spark, you know, mm -hmm. excitement after many years together? And you said that, like, gosh, you know, if it wasn't there to begin with, then, then I don't know if I can really help them. Yeah. But, but you could, you know, if you start, like, but they it's could never teach too late, them right? How to be better lovers, totally. Right. The word passion, I mean, I don't know, uh, but how to be better lovers for sure. Guess, like, uh, at what age people say they usually have those, like, best lovers, optimal right. lovers, what was the age they experienced the best sex in their lives? And what, what's the answer? You no, I'm, I'm curious. You, you try to guess. Mm. What age do you think people have their first best sex? 
you know, according to the study, first best sex study. You know, it's it's hard because like for some people it was you know, look okay uh, again anecdotally usually first times first few times you have sex is just experimentation. A lot of people are doing it for the first time. They may not have had much preparation or education in that area. Yeah, so it's it's really kind of like. Yeah, that's poking around in the sex, dark, right? Yeah. Like, so first sex is rare yeah. to, to provide those feelings. But I think, what, again, when people list, probably spend some time listening to their response, have some time having sex with maybe one or more partners, I'm going to guess that, um, gosh, you know, maybe by the age of like 25, 27, 28, maybe like around there, is that the time? That's what I thought, but actually age 55, first great sex. So, oh my gosh. so I'm all looking forward, you know, <laughs> myself. So 50, 55 is when people say they they had the greatest sex of their yes. lifetime yes. on average. Mm -hmm. wow. And there's like a little bit of science behind it, if you wish. So they say like when we are twenties, for those like a lot of people are still could be living with the parents, or sometimes there's a fear that your parents could walk in into you. You know, you can fully like relax and explore if you're living together with your parents. In your thirties, quite often people would have children, so they're afraid the children walk into the bedroom. So you don't really explore too much, and then in their forties, quite often you finally start exploring in a more relaxed, or slow down way, and to be very focused on your partner and really figuring things out. <laughs> you know that makes sense. Uh, that makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> yes. it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. And then it makes sense. Good. Then right? it makes sense. No, yes. but it's true because when you think about it, truly, like twenties are kind of like neurotic. You're trying to like yeah. prove yourself in life. You're trying to achieve like some sort of somewhere in your career. You know, thirties, you're again, if you have children, that's that's what it's all about. You know, children, forties, you know, your children, are teenagers, maybe by that point, like on average, right? It's all different for everybody. And and then only in your fifties are you yeah. then, you know, your, your children, you know, if you have them, are probably you know kind of don't need your immediate immediate yeah. and constant attention maybe they're off to college and that's when you finally have a moment to relax and yeah listen to yourself and yeah. listen to your partner and really explore yeah and like 55. okay yeah. there's hope <laughs> yeah there is hope i'm there's like hope. i'm so excited i was like okay like it's something to look forward for right you know? right 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 no that's that's really cool yeah you know um and you know i could share you one also quick example like in terms of like how to use the time when you finally have time to explore more about sex you know there was like one couple who decided who, they were like actually limiting different social interactions sometimes not going to some concerts or gatherings but like really giving that focused attention to each other and sometimes they would even like uh have those like sexy weekends i forgot how they would call them and they would just buy a lot of snacks in the fridge and, and cook some like easy foods and they wouldn't leave the bed they would just stay in bed from friday to like Monday morning and they would just get out of bed to get to the refrigerator to snack a little bit and they would come back to bed. So then you have higher probability, right? To <laughs> figure out more about great sex. That's a, that yeah. is a... Very devoted, dedicated listen, to the topic. That, that's, yes. that's commitment. You know, um, right. So if we, okay. So we, we were talking about, I'm just still on this, you know, so 55 uh, yeah. on average is the best, <laughs> best sex of your life. That's yeah. when you start really getting it. You know, how do you, if you've been together, because you know, there is, there is um, this biological kind of um, reality yes. that, that biologists point out that ev evolution, narrowly speaking, um, you know, men are meant to spread semen with as many partners as possible, and women are sort of wired to receive semen from as many different partners as possible for the survival of the fittest. That's what the biologists tell us, you know, kind of what drives sexual desire in us mm -hmm. from the evolution standpoint, yeah. right? From a commitment and relational standpoint, you know, we want to truly um, be devoted to one partner, want to build a family, want to build a life with that person, you know, for many of us um, uh, human beings. Um, so yet, how do you, how do you, without changing partners, yeah. keep that excitement? Or do you, you know, because, you know, some people opt for open relationships. Yeah. Is that the answer in your experience? What's the... You know, for of course, that could be an easy answer for actually for multiple couples, you know, this new relationship energy acronym, right? right. For polyamorous uh, couples, open relationship couples, when they have this NRE, new relationship person enters the configuration of uh, right. this dyad, right? They add one more person. Then, of course, everything is like new. It's like this novelty and excitement. You don't need to work hard to create any of it, it, it comes. 
Do you find that that's kind of cheating because you're not really focusing on your partner, you're kind of relying on somebody else to provide that boost of fresh energy uh, to your couple? Is that what you recommend for couples? I don't really recommend, but when I see people like being really, really like stuck with each other and they don't know like where to go and what to do and whatever I prescribe to them, they're not really excited doing it. So I'm asking them sometimes like openly, like, you know, what do you think could work better for your configuration? like. If you don't want to uh, destroy, if you want to keep the umbrella of this marriage, if marriage works like very well on ma multiple levels, you know, socially, financially, wh whatever, but you want to get your sexual gratification somehow, but not with each other, I mean, would it make sense to open this relationship? And, you know, we do, we start having like discussions about it, sometimes for quite a few sessions, looking at all the pros and cons, and one of the very important ingredients here as you might imagine they need to be super 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 good communicators because it needs to be over communication if they right the ground rules something. right because yeah. it's very easy okay. to if you don't talk about something and then you find yourself in a territory that's really unacceptable or really triggers some feelings in the partner yeah you know it's it's you, you can't walk back you can't undo what's been done right so yeah. you, you gotta like yeah, really dangerous. talk about the boundaries yes if you know if they're important to if you to make honest. sure that yes. you don't do something irreversible where a partner all of a sudden feels like they can't trust you anymore. yes and then kind of and uh, but it's also it's a very it could be a very tricky space because then you have to talk about it again and again though so we look at those boundaries sometimes like two weeks later mm -hmm. two months later depending on what's going because on and how, things, and how things develop and meeting with somebody new could evoke a lot of new dynamics and then you maybe redefine those boundaries again right so it's not like you once figure it out and stay with it for the next 10 years you know it, it's a living breathing thing totally yeah it um, adds complexity yeah. it's excitement but complexity yeah so 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 then okay so are there like tips and tricks that you have for keeping a relationship let's say the couple um is not yet ready to open their relationship right yeah. so they yeah. would like to stay together committed to each other yeah. and exclusive to each other well, do you have any uh, well yeah tips or tricks? i kind of i didn't put them together beforehand uh, but you know what comes to mind always you know i always recommend to practice curiosity ongoingly like daily like you know what else i might not know about you what else maybe, maybe well, like what if what if is a good question because einstein said that you know it's not the answers that you uh, it's not the answers that you find, it's the questions that you ask. That's the yes. true sign of intelligence, right? Totally. Curiosity. Curiosity. So what if is, is an important question. Yeah, what if curiosity. we do this? What if we try that, right? Yes. That or part of the curiosity could be playing different games. There are a lot of uh, adult games, board and card games that were created now during COVID when people just sit together, they have nowhere to go, they don't dare to go outside and meet with, uh, you know, during, during social uh, events with others so they could play together there's like this battleship game i know if you played when you were a little boy like a battleship you know when you kill each other's like boats on right. the, so now you can buy a battleship sexual game where when you kill little ships like you kill small boats big ship a big boat uh, means intercourse potentially and then you choose different cards and it tells you exactly how specific sexual encounter should happen at the end of the game so like well, a bunch so it's of almost like when 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 you know if somebody's not used to kind of exploring in their own mm -hmm. maybe they are kind of they they feel all right about doing it because oh well that's what the game tells us to do i guess let's try it right let's yeah. do it right because that's what the game is yeah you know, that's easy it's, like, it's kind of like farming out think, to the third party to think and create something maybe not supernatural for you maybe you have some boundaries like limitations some taboos but here it's on the card so you right. have to just to Follow the rules. Follow, Follow the, the rules. Yes. You know, because I was remembering you shared that one of your clients is a Catholic, and so it's kind of a we we're talking yeah. about um, uh, just how previous experience shapes, you know, how premarital experience oh, yeah. shapes post-marital sexual oh, yeah. experience. And so you were saying that one of the clients, you know, mentioned that you know we're expected to be absolutely, you know, um, uh, a, a, a you know, um, celibate, abstinent, celibate yeah. and abstinent before yeah. marriage, but yeah. then after marriage, we're supposed to turn to a slut and be like everything and you know, anything always and everything for our husband, always, always like ready and super. So they have no experience of having sex, you know, before marriage, and then they're mm -hmm. expected to be totally super satisfying and super sexual yeah. beings after marriage, oh, and there is sorry. no preparation for it, there is no experience yeah. in that. And that could be an example of yeah. somebody who 
just does it whichever way you know they figure out how yeah but don't another, really have a way to, to make it exciting for themselves unless there's yes, a game or and that's why a I think you know I really like stand for like giving very good sexual education to others because I think I mean I think I, I see how much it's missing in this country in particular and how limited it is for people and it's rewarding to see when people come back to me like a more playful uh, when they start having more vibrant sexual lives after using some of those ticks and uh, trips and <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know gosh trips tips you know like I, <laughs> I can't know to speak tips and tricks you know yes. because the thing is um so it, being curious being playful like i was saying really like exploring more your own body and like teaching your partner about what works well for you uh what else we do uh, what else I would recommend? Definitely different erotic literature that could be stimulating for your mind and for your body. And now, by erotic literature, you mean like erotic novels yeah, or sometimes like sometimes erotic novels. Sometimes you know, I really like this book. It's called Behind the Closed Doors, where half of the book is male fantasies, another half of the book is female fantasies, and to see the difference and to read them out loud and see what works more for you. Are you more aroused by? what is considered to be quote-unquote female stuff or more like male stuff more mm -hmm. direct and more explicit or more female so gradual build up and just more behind romance. closed doors yes, behind okay closed. and that's that's for couples to explore or for people to do it individually uh you know you could do it either way if you like if i'm working with somebody on helping them to invite more fantasy into their lives i could assign it to read by themselves and maybe uh, play with their own bodies as a result of it. If it's for couples, I had a couple where they read those stories out loud to each other, those uh, erotic fantasies, and then they would engage in some sensual massage after that, and then it would uh, turn into the intercourse, you know. Mas you know, I, I read somewhere that, uh, what was the, you know, just <laughs> so many uh, statistics. One, in one place I read that uh, it's almost like 80% of all sex starts with a variation of some sort of a massage. So massage is a great way to get into a sexual yeah. activity. If we or into relaxation to begin with, like to really yeah. start helping somebody slowing down, relaxing. And to be here and now, to be yes, present. Yeah, now, and, and then now. hopefully it will, and for some people it just will stay on the level of relaxation, but for somebody they could take it further. And a lot of people help, hope to take it further. <laughs> You know, we're talking about like more, yeah. especially longer term relationships when they don't know how else to approach each other, what will be the most effective way, you know. So. What, for example, in your experience, you know, how, what, what's an, what, what is an effect, what is a good, easy way to let the other person know that you're in the mood, for example, how? Uh, oh, well, it really depends what works for you and what works for another person, right? Like if some people, could be very direct and straightforward and say like let's go and have sex and it could work for their partner and like sure and they could be ready but for more people that know it would not work like this or you could say you're like you are in the mood but then another person might take again like maybe it's another conversation because we could speak separate about male and female arousal cycles and they're so different mm -hmm. time wise and the process wise so yeah so, but right. I could tell you at least about initiating anything sexual that it's super important conversation that they have. Like, how do you like to initiate sex yourself, and how do you think your partner likes it to be initiated? Because it could be a lot of misunderstanding even here. So it's important to become aligned on that. Well, how do you get well. aligned? Well, again, through the communication, it right? All comes back to communication. All communication, because like if. You know, like one of my recent couples, again, like he is more direct, straightforward. If he wants it, he wants it. And she's more of a sensual type where she wants ambience, um, different aromas, music to be part of the scene. So she could start feeling, creating more of that mood. And, and for him, it means investing, knowing that, and investing at least 20, 30 minutes maybe to create some ambience um, so that the wife will be also open and the mood as well. But you know, there's so many different scenarios. And it's almost like learning to speak another language, yes. right? Because we, yes. we each have our kind of like love language. We yeah. have our sex language that yes. we speak, right? So for some people, if they if they smell, you know, a certain 
aroma, if they see candles, if they see, you know, a certain smile, a certain touch, you know, may yeah. uh, signal to them, you know, yeah. so it's, it's, it, it all, it, it comes back to communication. Well, you know, it, it's, it's, um, uh, it's Valentine's Day today, you yes. know, it is, um, yes, we it are, is. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a day for love. It's, a, you know, we, you specifically are a sex expert, you know, an expert in the field of um, uh, sexuality. And we'll have uh, two more um, uh, parts, you know, to this conversation when we can dive specifically into specific topics. Is there any, not advice, but are there any words of, um, just not even words of wisdom, but some, yeah. some w words of, you know, sharing that you would like to share with people on this day that's dedicated to love? You know, we talk about sex, but sex is also love making. Yes. Yes, and we talked a little bit about pleasure today as well, right? And we can expand on it more because there could be so many things that you could be pleasurable for you, could be pleasurable for your partner. But maybe like to remember that like pleasure is the measure. And when you have any type of erotic play together, it doesn't have to be an intercourse, but if two of you feel like it's pleasant, you, you're really enjoying the experience, like you're really enjoying maybe like either deep kissing or really the touch of the skin against your partner's skin or really being like in his or her like deep embrace or anything that feels good that like i don't know feeling maybe i don't know some edible paint on your body being like licked from you whatever is pleasurable like just really enjoying it and not making it very anything like performance oriented that we must achieve that we must be at come here tonight from point a to point b or we must go together to this expensive dinner like not necessarily it could be something new that you could try with each other tonight or tomorrow right um, or something that you already know that gives you a lot of joy and could create fun experience and just do it and enjoy it in the pleasure of it you know and enjoy the sensations that's re you know that really resonates with me personally because i think just our our world is so performance oriented, so results oriented, right? And I think for men especially, it's it's this whole thing of you know how are you performing in, in bed? You know, it's you know for for some it's just all about you know the, the size of your instrument or how well do you know how to use it and you know how can you keep it up or whatever it is that 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 you know how people measure performance. Yeah. You know, so shifting your focus from performance yes. to pleasure what yes. gives you pleasure that 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 right there that you know removes you know a great deal of stress because i think even just speaking for myself you know and about performance you know i think the 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 number one and, and research uh supports that the number one kind of um enemy of uh, in bed is stress you know and so male and female um, yeah. uh, you know, subjects in various studies report that the number one thing that, that stands in the way of an optimal sexual experience is stress. So one way to reduce the stress is to shift the focus from performance yes. oriented Just to relaxation to and to relaxation joy. enjoyment. Enjoyment, uh, exploration as well. Just, you know, that's great. Yeah, like yeah. make it stress-free, like enjoy, explore and have fun with each other. Yeah, and you know, um, it's it's an infinite, it's an infinitely um, sort of complex and, and uh, such a beautiful topic, you know, human sexuality. Uh, I know that uh, you're planning a couples retreat, um, you know, yeah. with uh, some some of your colleagues uh, who are also in this field uh, for couples. Where you know, uh, where can people find out more if they are interested in working with you directly or going on that retreat with you? Sure. So we have this page, it's called KetoConnectionRetreat.com and we are planning it in Mexico in the beautiful jungle of Ashkaret. And when is that? It's going to be the end of April, April 13th to 18th and a beautiful okay. location, yes. And All we right. have we'll, uh, so we'll be sure to uh, yeah. put, that, put that link uh, in the description to this video so where they can learn, people can learn more and, um, and, and actually try things out uh, for themselves if they wish to do that. Well, there is much more to be discovered and you will have two more conversations in this Ask This Sexpert series. Our sexpert is here to answer your questions. By the way, if you have questions and would like them answered in the next um, a video, please um, please put it in the comments underneath the video. And this, um, and for now, we will uh, wish you a beautiful Valentine's Day. We're gonna cheers to that. Happy um, Valentine's uh, happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you. And we will see you next time on Ask This Expert.